Let's talk about this amazing story and how Tim has been buying and growing SaaS companies and has now grown to $50 million in ARR. So Tim is what looks to be the owner of SaaS.group and they purchase SaaS businesses and then blow them up consistently. So the portfolio is currently grossing $50 million in ARR. So it started in 1996. He left his hometown for the University of Cologne. And in the month of the last exam, they started the domain marketplace, which he ran as CEO for over 10 years. The Star Group was founded in 2017 as an alternative investment for themselves, following the interest in SaaS products. They initially invested their own money, around 5 million euros, only to buy initial cash flowing and to test their assumptions. So they had friends invest another $5 million and they managed to acquire larger companies with higher growth rates while keeping the margins and over the last two years they've mainly financed further acquisitions through debts as debt is a lot cheaper than equity it comes with its own risks and you have to have a proven business model before you can aim for debt so they need a balance of both not to have too high leverage meaning there is a good profitability to debt ratio and curious on what that ratio is there's no fixed rule a good ratio is one we can sleep well at night and in practice he says around two to four times the free cash flow can safely be taken up as debt. So if you're making a million each year, you can leverage two to four million easily without losing any sleep. In terms of what James, or sorry, Tim looks for in SaaS companies, they're looking for around one to $5 million in ARR and has a niche but growing product and is supported by product led growth. They like low touch self-serve models. They're focusing on developer marketing and productivity tools and they treat them independently. So they're all low touch SaaS products. So while they are different products under the hood, there are 80% similarities in marketing, billing, and products. In terms of how they find them, they're going to scrape various sources from the web, analyzing multiple factors, traffic, social signals to gauge revenues, and then they're going to email founders with products they like. They really admire bootstrappers, and they also do occasional acquisitions. In terms of the tech stack, not all of the projects have the same one. They just try to keep the variations limited. With every product they acquire, they look at things they can improve. This can be product stuff like technical or growth opportunities. They often see a lack of structured marketing and SEO. In terms of what happens to the founders, they only acquire them as exit for founders. Some founders want to get out ASAP. They're burned out or have other life goals. It's not a deal. It has a small negative price they can pay, but it's totally possible. Most founders like to stay around for a bit. It's going to be a few months to a year. And they definitely try to create a model to maintain motivation and align long-term incentives. Let's talk about how they actually accelerate it. As they're going and buying these SaaS products, and typically when you're buying something, you want to increase it from where it is. And so they start by improving the boring things first, such as onboarding and email marketing, because founders often ignore them. So they do UX research, user testing, and issue tracking. They love user snap for this. And the goal is to figure out what the main issues are for users. It's really important not to jump to fast conclusions and take things as granted. It's all about designing the different use cases and personas for the product, and then delivering the right onboarding and subsequent email marketing to both dominant users as well as active users. And sorry, that's dormant users there. They primarily use customer.io. Then they focus on low hanging fruit like SEO and content marketing, and they're on a data first approach. So never assume you know the keywords. In terms of things to avoid, the most common problems are wrong pricing, bad user onboarding, and complicated slash common ZUX which has been properly tested. So overall, a super cool story here. Some definitely really cool nuggets of information, including that most founders ignore the boring stuff. And that's your blocking and tackling of just basic things such as email marketing and onboarding can really improve everything overall. So this story is by James Fleischman here. I'll leave a link to this in the description, but definitely some cool things learned from this. If you've gotten this far in the video, I'm sure you want to start your own micro SaaS. There's a link in the description below. We can get sneaky micro SaaS ideas you can steal for free all you have to do is enter in your email so again there's a link in the description below so this concludes the video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video i would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below if you have any questions leave a comment but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video